Hey guys, so you know I did this video about a month ago about how um, how the garden just kind of sucketh, right? It was really depressing for a while there because the rain here, the humidity, there was disease and pests that I usually don't have to deal with and it was just kind of nutty. And I had so many people reach out to me and just say that they were praying for me and thinking about me and just that really meant a lot to me. So um, if you thought about that or if you were one of those people, I appreciate you taking the time to do that and knowing where my heart is and how important um, growing food is and growing. It's just, it's just amazing, right? And being able to teach everybody and do all the things. So I want to thank you for that. And it is windy, so hopefully it's not picking up too much. But honestly, I'm not sure if I can ever find a good enough time to come out and video out here in the garden. But I wanted to do a follow-up video to that because I want to go show you what the garden is giving me. And actually, it's been so much better than I thought it was going to be. I'm so thankful for that. And my biggest point that I want to convey to you today is that never give up on your garden and never give up on gardening. I know lots of people get frustrated, so they kind of give up on their garden. Maybe they rip it up or they walk away and say, forget it. I'm not even going to deal with it for the rest of the year. And sometimes people go say, I'm done with gardening in general. I don't want you to do that. So please don't give up on your garden. Don't give up on gardening because there's always lessons to be learned, which is a good thing. That's how our brains get wrinkles and it keeps us younger and it helps us think better. And the garden is always teaching us. And we have to learn how to adapt and change and roll with the punches no matter what this weather is going on and what the weather patterns are. Remember, we can't control the weather, but we can adapt to it. We can figure things out. We can cover things. We can cut things. We can do things. I mean, there's always things that we can do to help. So I never want anybody to give up on gardening or on their garden every year because what God has designed for us and what we're able to do and comes back and there's seeds. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. And there's so much for us to be able to partake in it. And I just want to go through the garden this year and then show you guys exactly how everything is doing better than I thought, like I said. And, um, and a lot of it has to do because of the extended hot weather. It is, it's really warm right now where I'm out right now. And it's been really warm, so the tomatoes are coming in. Our frost hasn't happened yet, which it typically does. And I don't see it happening for a little bit, a couple weeks, you know, who knows what the weather, you can never tell. But I don't see it happening for a couple weeks. So that means the harvest, even though it took longer to get to where it's at right now, it's coming in later than expected, but it's coming in. So if I would have gave up on that garden, I would have walked away from an abundance of food. So never give up on gardening, never give up on, give up on your garden. So we're gonna go through, I'm gonna show you some stuff that I just didn't see coming, which is fabulous. So let's check it out. Okay, first up on this garden fall tour, which I'm really excited to talk to you guys about today, is my butternut squash. Once some things started dying back, uh, apparently not the weeds, because, you know, I tried not giving up on them, but I did. Okay, so butternut squash. We have some really weird shaped ones and all different kinds, but they're there. They're turning the beige color that I want them to turn, which is just exactly what I want. I'm super excited about that. We have more over here and more over here. I don't know what's going on with these weird shapes, but you know what? When I cut into them, I'm hoping that they're fabulous. Another thing that I, came, I was actually able to grow this year are these. Look at that one's too yellow. It's bad. These are called midget cantaloupes. Uh, so it's I'm not trying to be wrong with the saying the word midget. They're actually called midget cantaloupes. They're from M.I. Gardener. I've never been able to grow cantaloupe. They uh, definitely taste like cantaloupe. I would like them a little sweeter, but who know? But I'm sure the weather had lots to do with the impact of them growing and their flavor. And I know cantaloupe is not always that actually flavorful. I know there's some more over here. I picked three the other day. I did even hold back to take a picture. I just had to cut into them and see. And they worked and it's delicious and they will grow, uh, go great for smoothies. And so I'm really excited about growing cantaloupes this year. And here is the corn. I did a video before a couple months ago 
and I was worried about the pollination and stuff like that. This is called Kiss Me Sweet Corn. It worked really good. I had some really great big uh, ears. That is, this is a sweet corn. It's an organic heirloom corn. It's You can seed save from it, and it's, it tastes really good. So if you can go get that, Kiss Me Sweet Corn, I highly suggest it. Um, I have it in different layers because they were planted at different times. I've been able to harvest, and we've been able to eat that. So that has worked out really good, and I'm excited about that. So let's go, let's see, peppers. Again, everything is just coming in later than I thought. But it's coming in, and that's all that matters. So I didn't give up on my garden. I'm certainly not giving up on gardening. It has been so hot and dry here this last couple weeks. But I need the heat to go ahead and ripen these things up. So we have lots of peppers in here. Let me see if I can find some. I'm not coming out and harvesting every single day like I typically do. So it's every couple days. But I'm getting a plenty of stuff. These are purple but they, they look so black don't they yeah so whenever I need a pepper I can come out here and go ahead and grab some there's my dog Hank he's hanging out with us today Pe uh, banana peppers I was out of banana peppers and I'm the only one that eats them on my pizza or wraps or something like that so I was glad to see a bunch come in I've been able to go ahead and process oh about maybe eight to ten pints of that so that'll be plenty there's still more growing which is exciting lots of peppers going on as well that I've been able to use in my dragon fart salsa. That is an unauthorized canning recipe. I've been able to pick, these are some eggplant. That's a little baby one right there. Um, okay, so what was I just saying? I got sidetracked. Okay, so, oh, here's another one. So yeah, so I've already picked several. We're actually making homemade sourdough noodles tonight with homemade uh, roasted sauce an eggplant parmesan, and I am excited about that. And we also have some jalapenos. We did some jalapeno poppers, cream cheese with the bacon wrapped, and we smoked them. Oh gosh, what a special treat. Because I was out of, almost out of jalapenos, was able to go ahead and slice those up and get those canned as well. These are my firecracker peppers amongst all the weeds here. Um, those are... Those are spicy. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Those are spicy. So I have this white stuff, this white frost cover, tunnel cover stuff on the tomatoes because there was a bird or something that came in and was starting to peck on all the red ones. So I've just kind of left that up there, even though I don't know, if, I don't think he's around anymore and I'm glad for that. But I've just left it up because whatever, in case it does frost, it'll help keep it a little better. But there are some just beautiful tomatoes that have been coming on some have cracked and look funky but they are still fine you can see there's lots to be lots to be picked still my plants you can see are definitely dying back they they dealt with the blight over here on this side um spraying the copper had has helped them um just be able to hang on and with this warm weather they've been able to go ahead and ripen up but they are just so pretty. Like this one? That's not a good guy. I'm not going to keep him. But they are just, they've just turned out really good. Lots of good stuff in the garden. Let's go see what else we can find. It's been, it's been hot. But we're here. This is buckwheat. I just let it self seed and just kind of keep going in the garden. Um, it's pretty, right? so pretty and pink the pollinators absolutely love it it gives it some good fall food for them to go ahead and come in there's actually been lots and lots of blooms on all of my pumpkin zucchini whatever squash i have out here uh, which makes it difficult to get in and to harvest some of this stuff when the pollinators are attracted to the bloom still but they need their food and i will gladly share the space with them this is a pie pumpkin so look, it's already turning orange. That's so good. Here's another pumpkin amongst my shadow. We have lots of pumpkins that grew. And again, because of the extended heat, it's been able to go ahead and, you know, they're actually being able to turn into colors that they need to turn into and ripen and stuff like that. Let's see. Here's some more tomatoes. Look at that. Got all different shades going on there. So pretty. I've uh, never been able to grow marigolds. I have massive, 
marigold bushes in the garden and they smell really good. I kind of enjoy them. Um, let's see what we have over here. Oh, I have honey butternut squash over here as well. And they're almost getting ready to harvest as well. And those are butternut squash, but sweeter, hence the name honey, which just works out really good. This over here is popcorn and they are very small ears. So they may or may not do something, but I like to try it anyway. So some popcorn, let's see what we got over here. Amongst all these lines that I'm walking through, this is amaranth. It looks like it needs to be harvested. Everything is just like literally each day. It's so hot and dry. It's just changing big time. I gotta come out here and do some stuff. A lot of these bare spots that you see here are actually our dry beans, which I'm gonna go walk and show you over here. So I wanted to pick the dry beans out of the ground and get them drying using the sun because I knew there was no um, um, rain in the forecast. And I wanted to go ahead and just use my fencing. These are completely dried out. They were on the ground and because of the, you know, like the dew in the morning, they were getting wet. Some were getting moldy and I didn't want to lose them. So I'm just, I simply pulled all the, actually I had the kids, pull all of the um, bean plants out of the ground. These are my dry beans. Just, I'll need to preface that. These are my dry beans. And I just, we just stuck them right here to hold. These are super dry now. They're not dry enough to like go ahead and store in your jar with a lid on or anything like that, but they are dry enough for us to go ahead and pick them off of the, out of there and start the finish drying process, I guess you could say. Look at that, got all these wrapped around like that. Isn't that awesome? And this was my um, tomatoes over here that dealt with less nutrients and definitely more blight. So I come over here these, and pick these first. There are some blight issues on some of them, but for the most part, I've been able to get some, just not as prolific as it should be. I was out of tomatillo, uh, well, salsa verde, so uh, I got enough canned up for me, because I'm, again, I'm the only one that eats that kind of stuff too. So that was good that tomatillos came in. We have, well, we picked most of the onions, and if anybody would like to come pick most of these weeds, that'd be great. Now I'm kidding. Remember, we're going to put the pigs in here this year, and it's going to really help with nitrogen and nutrients, and they're all their poop, right? Love the poop. So these are my um, onions that um, I did from seed this year, which I'm thrilled about. Those are looking really good. Pretty soon I can knock those tops over and let them kind of tell them that they're done growing because it is the middle of September, we're done, and I can pick these and then go ahead and start the drying process out with that too. So I've got lots of good stuff there. Let's see what else we got. I know, oh here, I have carrots. Those are carrots. I've pulled a couple to taste them. Normally I like to let carrots stay until it frosts. It makes them sweeter. However the process is of getting cold and stuff like that, it makes them sweeter. I absolutely love it. But normally I'm able to pick some so we could have a snack and just try it. But this year they were terrible tasting, just terrible, terrible. So I'm hoping after a frost, maybe they'll be okay. All right, so I think I pretty much showed everything. I have several rows of potatoes way over there that we need to dig up. I have started cutting the heads of the sunflowers because I plan to do some oil pressing this year. So this has already been dried off. I've cut it and then I've hung it like that. So it can just finish completely drying out. Again, just using solar and sun, nature's energy to go ahead and help me finish off some of the harvesting before I have to figure out where I'm gonna put all this or what I'm gonna do with it. So I hope you enjoyed the recap of this year's garden fiasco. It's got some things I'm gonna be doing next year and Oh, again, just that final message. Don't give up on your garden. Please don't give up on gardening because it is well worth it. There's always an abundance, even if it's not exactly what you thought. So I'll see you guys later.